It's time to say our core values. Ready? Number one, love God. We love God because God is love and he first loved us. Luke 10, 27 and John 3, 16. Number two, love people. We love people because God loves all people. Luke 10, 27 and John 13, 34. Number three, do your best. Do your best and God does the rest. Philippians 4.13 and 1 Corinthians 10.31. Number four, have fun. Have fun because God gives you joy. Acts 13.52 and Romans 14.17. Great job. Do you know what you're good at? Eating. <laughs> Maybe you're good at helping people. Or encouraging people. Maybe you're a good singer. Or a leader. You know what? Everyone has gifts and talents that God has given us. He gave each one of us things that we're good at. He even gave us the dreams in our hearts. God designed us to use the gifts he's given us to fulfill the dreams in our heart. You can use what's in your hands to fulfill what's in your heart. Let's talk about that. Cut. I love your work. One, two, three, four. There's something special about this place full of crazy characters and imagination run wild. A place where the good news of Jesus spreads out all over the world. Join us as we plan it, film it and wrap it up. So that's what I learned from the Sherpa's cat. While traversing the north face of Crygot's Pass. Oh, this is so fascinating. Tell me more. Whoa! Whoa! Hey, 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 Director Terry, how you doing? That. Who's this? This is Tony. He's starting an internship with us today. His job is to learn what it takes to work in Big HQ. Oh. To be a standout employee, you must be someone that fixes problems. Because ah! oh, we already have enough people causing the problems. Uh, well, sir, I'm a member of the Boy Scouts, so I'm prepared for anything. I've got everything I need in my backpack. Wow. I live to solve problems. Oh, great. You do just fine. Just remember what I told the indigenous Warwick tribe of the Himalayas. Director Terry, just set, please. We'll finish this off later. Hiya, Tony. Uh, I'm Dave, and this is... Oh, Dave, I know who you all are. I've seen every show, watched every movie. I own every album you guys have ever made. Even my German arithmetic album? I got the collector's edition with the bonus Elf Maltich. What's in the backpack? Well, I wanted to get off on the right foot with director Terry, so I prepared for everything. I got batteries, tape, a torch, water, bandages, popcorn, DVD, DVD player, digital projector, inflatable life raft, life Whoa, jacket, electric... Isn't that a little over-prepared? Oh, no. I want to be the most useful person I can be. What's that? Oh, this. 
It's an all-in-one tool my grandfather gave me. I always have it in my hand. Calling all cast and crew to set, please. Well, that's us, Tony. You want to come with? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be right there. I think I know Tony from somewhere. I know I've seen him before. Hmm, I don't, don't know. Hello, small tiny human. Hi. Oh, it's good to be in church, no? Yes, 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 church. Let me tell you, I've had a rough week. No. Uh, but you are only one who listens to me. So let me tell to you, number one problem of week. You see, at church, they say, I can be used to make things happen. But God is so big and I am somewhat not so big. Uh, I cannot see how I can help. Let me share with you my concerns. Share. Yeah. I can't help the sick. I can't build a house. Uh, I do have a lot of money, though. Maybe 75 cents. Share. Yeah. How in the world am I going to share the good news if I cannot even walk? Share. Yeah. What was that, my friend? Yeah. Are you telling to me that no matter how small we feel, there is always something we can do. The key is to trust God and he can use us to make big things happen. Is that what you're telling to me, my friend? Am I, am I putting him to sleep? Oh, well, I thank you, my friend, even though you are with the fairies right now. So Timmy and his friends were reading stories in the clubhouse. Each taking turns with a torch, they told stories of kings and queens, knights and horses. Hut, hut. Can someone fix that lamp? Tony, do you have anything in that backpack that can help? Uh, Director Terry, sir. I'll see what I have. Okay. I guess it'll have to do. From the story of the kings and queens, and action. Each taking turns with a torch, they told stories of kings and queens, knights and horses, and tales of distant lands. Keep your hands. Oh, hands. <clears throat> oh, cut. Ah, oh. that piano is out of tune. Can anyone tune a piano? No, but I can tune a fish. Da -da 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 -da. Not helping, guys. Sorry, I couldn't resist the opportunity. Da -da 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 -da. Great, great. Can someone fix the piano? What about this, sir? Uh, guess we'll give it a go. Okay, again. And action. The best part of the story was when Timmy did voices. Whether it was the old king, who goes there? Or the head butler, dinner is served. The boys had so much fun telling each other... Oh, cut! Cut! Can someone fix this? On it, boss. Wow. Cut. We're already cut. Then stop! Stop everything! We'll break for lunch and we'll come back and clean it up. Something just moved in my tummy. I just can't place Tony. Yeah, I think I've seen him before somewhere. It's so weird. Hmm. I had a crazy dream last night. When that was at the zoo, someone pushed me into the dinosaur land. You were at the zoo? So I, so there was a caveman who gave um, a dinosaur a really big ginormous half five. Then I gave him a roly poly half five. What's a roly poly high five? You do a roll and you have five. Wow! That, that was, was a crazy, crazy dream. Hey, Tony. I brought you some lunch. Uh, thanks. But I'm not really hungry. Ho-ho! What's that like? It's terrible. Just like the job I did in there today. Just terrible. Don't be like that. Everybody's first day is terrible. 
I remember on Becky's first day, she said that Jesus was born in Benjamin. <laughs> or was that me? Either way, don't worry about it. You can't define your whole experience based on one morning. You'll get better. You'll grow, you'll learn, you'll pack what you need next time. Less tape? Be confident. you do a great job. But what if I can't do a great job? I mean, what if I don't have what it takes? Remember, God created you, and he wouldn't trust you with something that you can't handle. But what do I do now? Well, I remember what my dad, Mr. Man Dan, used to say to me. He'd say, funny, if you don't know what to do, use what's in your hand. What's in my hand? Hey, look, the set's all clear. But how are we going to fix these problems? I know what to do. From that day on, the king, with his loyal companions at his side, ruled the land with a loving hand. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. And cut. That's a wrap, guys. Well done, Tony. Well done, Tony. That was amazing. All the props were fixed and everything worked. What happened? Well, somebody helped me realise that the answer to my problems were in my hand all along. Thanks, funny man, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just don't think we'll ever figure out where we know Tony from. Hmm. Before the days of the parting of the Red Sea, Moses was a shepherd. He looked after his father-in-law's sheep. One day, while Moses was out shepherding in the wilderness, he stumbled across a most peculiar bush. It had flames of fire blazing out of the middle of it, but the fire didn't seem to be burning the bush. Moses was shocked by what was taking place. What's happening here? It's amazing. I can't believe it. The bush isn't even burning, he said. Then God called out from the flame, Moses, Moses. Yes, I'm right here, Moses responded. Don't come any closer, God said. Take the sandals off your feet. You're standing on holy ground. Moses did exactly as God had instructed. I've seen the trouble my people are going through in Egypt, said God. I've heard their cries for help, for freedom from their slavery. I intend to free them, get them out of there and bring them to a good land. It is time for you to go to Pharaoh. I am sending you. What? Why me, Lord? asked Moses. I can't do that. No one will listen to me. I will be with you, said the Lord. But Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me? The Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, Moses replied. Then the Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. As he did, it turned back into a staff in his hand. Then the Lord said, put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak and when he took it out, the skin was white with leprosy, a deadly disease. Moses put his hand back into his cloak and it became well again. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe these two signs, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground, and it will become blood. Moses was still nervous. But I cannot speak well. I don't think I'm the man for this job. God was angry with Moses' lack of faith, but promised Moses that his brother Aaron would join him and speak for him. Now go. 
I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Moses went on to do exactly what God had told him to do and saw many amazing things in his lifetime. He freed the Israelites and led them into their promised land. It all started by using what was in his hand. What's in your hand? What can God use that you have? Although it might be scary to offer it up to God, He can do far more than we ever could with what we have in our hands. He's that kind of God. So what is in your hand? When I was younger, maybe even your age, my dad wanted to take me on a big hike across Tasmania. It was going to be 72 kilometers and we were going to climb the highest mountain on the island. It was going to take a lot of hard work and a lot of small things to make sure that we were ready for that big week. We had to practice walking in the cold, in the wet, in the heat. We had to practice hiking with our equipment and our heavy packs to make sure that we would last the distance. And I bet if we hadn't have done all those small things, we wouldn't have been able to do that great thing. Point number one, small to great. When you serve God with what's in your hand, you're in training to serve Him for the rest of your life. Through serving God in small ways, you're in training so that you can last the distance when God uses you to serve Him in big ways that you can't even imagine yet. God has placed that dream inside your heart for His glory. If God gave us that dream tomorrow, just like the big hike, we probably wouldn't last the distance. What's in your hand right now might seem small, we may never know the huge impact that our small ways of serving God could have. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. God has called us according to His purpose. Use what's in your hand to fulfill what's in your heart. Point number two, what's in your hand? In the book of Exodus, God asked Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. This was no small task. It seemed practically impossible. Moses thought that God should ask somebody else to do it. He said to God, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't listen to me? What should I do? God said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? He had a wooden staff and God was able to use it to show his miraculous power. What about you? What do you have in your hand? We all have something in our hand that God can use. It might be a gift or talent that God has given you. It might be an opportunity you have or the place where God has you right now. Think about what you're good at, what you like doing and how God has designed you. 1 Peter 4.10, God's gift of grace comes in many forms. Each of you has received a gift in order to serve others. You should use it faithfully. Psalm 139, 14. How you made me is amazing and wonderful. I praise you for that. What you have done is wonderful. I know that very well. God has made you amazing and wonderful, just how you are. Get to it. Point number three. You can serve God with what's in your hand right now. You can serve God at school. He's put an amazing opportunity in your hand. You can be an amazing godly friend in your school. You can serve God in your family. God has made you to be a great brother, sister, son, daughter, or cousin to your family. You can serve God at your church. There's lots of ways you can help build God's house by serving. Look for opportunities to help others and serve right here in God's house. Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. What are you waiting for? You don't need an invitation to be a helper. You can start serving God in whatever you do. Use what's in your hand to fulfill what's in your heart.